Of the many benefits modern dentistry gives patients, few are enjoyed as much and for as long as a dental prosthesis. Whether removable, like dentures and partials, or fixed, like bridges and implants, the basic result is the same. Resurrected smiles, eating abilities, and general overall health. Recent research has proven the importance of a proper dentition on a person's overall health, especially as we age. The need to properly chew food to absorb its full nutritional benefits has never been greater. Almost all dentists provide prosthodontic dentistry. Although it's recognized as a specialty by the American Dental Association, most work in major cities. Patient needs for dentures, partials, and bridges will inevitably be filled in your practice. The ideal way to replace or reconstruct missing teeth is with fixed prosthodontics. In this mode, a bridge, which is the replacement tooth or teeth with attachments on either side, is constructed and permanently cemented into place. Usually, when talking about a bridge, we think of the standard crowning the teeth on either side of the space, which are called retainers, and fusing the replacement teeth or tooth between them, which is the abutment. Alternately, better materials and techniques, especially bonding, now allow us to modify the retainers and salvage tooth structure. A resin bonded bridge, also called a Maryland bridge, is such an appliance. Higher technology involves using dental implants. These inert cylinders, when surgically placed beneath the gums into the bone, can anchor the retainer for a bridge. This specialty is extremely demanding and changes nearly every day. Usually, implants are placed by oral surgeons or periodontists, although many general dentists are gaining the skills through advanced training. Removable prosthodontics like partials and dentures offer many patients a more economical alternative to fixed restorations. However, for many of them it's the only treatment available, their dental problem having progressed beyond your ability to correct it with fixed appliances. Removable prostheses are rarely as efficient and enjoyable to the patient as fixed ones are. It's been said that dentures, at their very best, are only 25% as effective as natural teeth. It's very important to not overdevelop patient expectations about removable prostheses, or really any area of dentistry for that matter. However, the implants just mentioned, when used in conjunction with removable prostheses, generally increase a patient's confidence. There are other, more intricate ways dentists improve the cosmetics and the wearability of removable prostheses, Precision attachments, magnets, and others that will appear since the production of this film series, these all make removable prosthodontics more enjoyable for everybody. When providing a patient with prosthodontic care, your encouragement becomes very important. Many fail to see the value or how the benefits exceed the time and the expense involved in creating the appliance. When everyone in your practice agrees to its importance and reassures the patient's decision, whether ultimately for fixed or removable care, your treatment goes beyond state-of-the-art and truly becomes a service for the patient. You can share with patients these three main reasons for accepting the proposed prosthodontic treatment. First, the diet issue we mentioned before. In order for certain salivary enzymes to be able to work, they must have teeth working with them. This is especially important with older people and in diabetics. Next, if the proper function of the jaw is interrupted, joint trauma can ensue with its variety of symptoms that can include headaches and ear problems, limited jaw opening, neck stiffness, and more. It's like a shelf of books. Remove one and the others fall into its place. Remove one tooth, and the adjacent teeth inevitably migrate into that space. And finally, looks. Few people disagree that a person's smile is the first thing noticed. 
Missing teeth stand out even worse than a sore thumb. When patients agree to prosthodontic care, they are consenting to some of the most state-of-the-art elements in dentistry. Your doctor will be using math, physics, biology, engineering, and innumerable other considerations in designing and delivering the prosthesis that best serves this patient's needs. This high level of treatment demands intricate care. The assortment of instruments and procedures used can rival any other area of dentistry. If your practice includes prosthodontics, the demands are passed on to you, the dental assistant, to make sure everything is ready and in place for an uninterrupted patient care. For the purposes of this film overview, we'll consider partials and dentures essentially the same. In fact, the variations in providing one or the other are pretty much limited to what the doctor and the lab do. Your role is essentially unchanged as a dental assistant. Let's look at the materials used in the long sequence of making a removable prosthesis. Then we'll go through the procedures and demonstrate some of the materials as we go. Many steps that the doctor performs may be legally relegated to the dental assistant in some states, thus involving you more in direct patient care. The equipment and the instruments used in making removable prostheses can include any of the items used in root canal therapies, in amalgams and composite restorations, in oral surgery, periodontics. In short, every single case is different. The doctor's instrumentation needs depend on the complexity of the patient's treatment. Assuming it's straight, removable prosthodontics, a basic setup is needed at the very least. Naturally, if any operative treatments are also going to be required, a local anesthetic may also be in order. Five groups of materials are used in the fabrication and delivery of a removable prosthesis. First, the impression trays, both stock or one-size-fits-all, and custom-made acrylic impression trays. Second, the impression materials, including both preliminary and final types. Third, the bite registration materials. Here we see wax and a silicone type. Fourth, the articulator and face bow transfer items. And last, the replacement denture teeth themselves. Let's discuss each in more detail before we demonstrate their use. We mentioned two types of impression trays. Stock trays in various sizes made of plastic or metal, and custom trays made in the office for each patient individually, and there are reasons for using these different types. Stock trays are generally used to capture an approximate impression or a negative representation of the teeth. The models made from these preliminary impressions are accurate enough for study or as an opposing model for the denture that's being made. Usually alginate impression materials are used for these stock trays, as is demonstrated here. Custom trays are hard acrylic trays that are custom fitted to the patient's own teeth and jaws. Used with special highly accurate impression materials, they create extremely accurate models that dentures and partials can be built upon. The preliminary impression material used most often is the alginate. This easy to use putty is inexpensive, mixes quickly, and is well tolerated by patients. When loaded into a tray and placed on the teeth, the set impression becomes a negative reproduction of the teeth and the gums. Upright teeth become dents or impressions in the alginate. Follow the package's mixing instructions very carefully when using the alginate impression material. When making impressions of the teeth, 
do the lower teeth first. This helps build the patient's confidence a bit before doing the more difficult upper impression. Seat the back of the tray first, letting the excess come forward as you seat and place the tray down or up against the teeth. When stone, like plaster of Paris, is poured into the negative spaces and allowed to harden, an exact model of the patient's teeth appears later when you pull the alginate impression away. These models are used for two things. For the doctor to study in planning the patient's care, and for you to use in making custom impression trays and temporaries, which we'll discuss when we talk about making bridges. Final impressions are the ones that create the models on which the lab will ultimately make the prosthesis. Thus it's critical that they be very accurate. And the only way to guarantee this is by using custom trays and the better impression materials. A custom tray is simply an acrylic container for the impression material. It has a handle to help placing it in and removing it from the mouth, and there are many ways to make one. In brief, on the study model, the remaining teeth and the gums are covered with a wax spacer, which will create a space between the tray and the teeth and the gums for the impression material. Then the tray material, which may be green or blue or some other color, is mixed rolled lengthwise and then gently conformed to the model. Trim the excess while it's still soft to minimize further shaping by hand which can be slow and messy. And be sure to build a handle into the front of the tray. Hot water speeds the set of the tray acrylic, and plus it softens the underlying wax. This makes removing the acrylic from the model much easier. And finally, check the hardened tray very carefully and trim away any sharp undersides that might painfully press on the patient's gums during the final impression process. It's always nice to completely smooth and polish it too. Remember, the patient sees this thing going into their mouth. Before being used, the underside of the tray must be painted with an adhesive, since custom impression materials are not sticky. That's why the impressions can be removed from the mouth freely without sticking to the teeth. 